What's up, folks? This is Josh back here from Inside Wrestling Truth. Uh, this is going to be my last WrestleMania review of the year. I'll do a few more before WrestleMania next year or what have you. Uh, today, we're doing it's 1994, uh, Madison Square Garden. We're doing WrestleMania 10. Uh, damn good event. Before I get into the. Um, the actual matches and the show, etc. Here are uh, a few facts or things you might not know that I would thought I'd just throw out there for you. Um, this was the first WrestleMania without Hulk Hogan, Mean Gene Okerlund, and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Um, there was a dark match before the show uh, where the Heavenly Bodies went over on the Bushwhackers. That's probably why it was a dark match. Um, and there was a 10-man tag match that never took place because Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon uh, match supposedly went over a whole lot longer than it was supposed to and Macho Man Randy Savage actually went after Shawn Michaels uh, for this. The match was IRS, IRS Jeff Jarrett, Rick Martel and the Head Trainers versus the 1-2-3 Kid uh, Hot Bob Holly, Tatanka, and the Smoking Guns. So there you go. Um, this show opens up with Vincent Mann. Um, then we have Little Richard who sings America the Beautiful. Uh, Vince and Jerry Lawler open up commentary. Um, then we go to a video package right off the bat. We see Owen and the Bret Hart's history of how they've had. The heat, how they've made up, uh, etc., which led to this match, um, which I thought was done very, very well by the WWF at the time. We have a H Owen Hart promo um, talking about how he's going to prove to everybody why he is the superior of the Hart family. Uh, then we open up with a fucking bad, awesome match. We have Owen Hart versus Bret Hart. Um, I gave this match four and a half stars. I thought it was absolutely awesome. Uh, back and forth, technical wrestling, high fly from Owen Hart mixed with Bret Hart's technical style was just an awesome match. Um, we would see Owen Hart pick up the win. Uh, they would try to do a move off the top rope, and Owen Hart would roll him up and pin him for the one, two, three. Uh, I thought it was very, very good match, man. Uh, one of my it's believe it or not, it's one of the most underrated WrestleMania matches. Uh, like when I last year when I did my most underrated wrestling match, WrestleMania matches, um, it was on on that list. But it's a very good match. Um, we would then see some kind of like Rogaine dude. I don't really know his name, but he was out there with Howard Finkel, and Howard Finkel had hair. It's actually kind of weird looking. Um, then we would go to tag team action. We have Bam Bam Bigelow with Luna Vachon versus Doink and Dink. Uh, this match didn't do anything for me. It only got two and a half stars out of five. Uh, Bam Bam and Luna Vachon would pick up the win. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a whole lot to talk about here, so I'm going to skip right over that. Uh, we would see a fake Bill Clinton. Uh, he would be sitting up in the seats with IRS and President Jack Tunney. Um, yeah, you know, they had the fake book playing going on there. Um, then we have a false count anywhere match. We have Macho Man Randy Savage versus uh, the Evil Crush. If you remember, they were good friends and they ended up being enemies in the storyline. Um, this match was awesome. Just awesome. I give it four stars out of five. Uh, they battled all over the arena, they beat the shit out of each other. Um, each person, you know, after a pinfall, had 60 seconds to get up, uh, of course. Um, but it was really put together very well. Randy Savage and Crush, you know, Crush the year before his WrestleMania match was not that good at all when he, fought, when he went up against Doink. Uh, you know. But this match was uh, very, very good. Uh, I gave it four stars out of five, like I said. The ending spot in this, they would go to the back, and Macho Man would tie Crush by the leg upside down to where he couldn't get up, and Macho Man would pick up the win. Um, 
but four stars out of five a very good match uh there was quite there was a a lot of good matches on this event like i said the bigelow in the match wasn't but for one thing they had the face doink i don't remember who it was but it wasn't matt born and matt born would have been doing it i'm sure it would have been a lot better um after Macho Man picks up the win on Crush, we would have Ty Pettengill. I don't know if any of y'all remember him. He was an announcer for a few years. Uh, he interviews the fake Clinton and IRS. Uh, really just asks Bill Clinton, you know, how he's doing. It's not really Bill Clinton, guys. But then he's like asking why IRS is there. IRS is like, I'm here to take care of his taxes, etc. Um... We have the WWF tag title match. We have the champions who were the Mounties but are now the Quebecers versus Men on a Mission. They had to have the name change from the Mounties to the Quebecers because supposedly it was offending some people in Canada is what I understood. That they were making Mounties look bad. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but Men on a Mission would pick up the win on a count out. Uh, the Quebecers were also managed at this time by Johnny Polo, who we will know later as Raven, or you might know as Scotty Flamingo. Uh, the men on the mission will pick up the win. I thought the Quebecers did a really good job in this match of carrying men on the mission. I only gave it three stars out of five, though. Uh, it wasn't the best. Then we have one of our first matches for the WWF Championship. Um, we have, you know, with Luger and Bret Hart both won the Rumble. They would have a coin toss, and they would both end up fighting Yokos in the WrestleMania to get a shot at the title. Um, <clears throat> in the first matchup, first off, we have a special guest referee, Mr. Perfect, who is still face at this time. Um, he fought Luger a year earlier, so people were suspicious about this. Um, WWE Champion Yokozuna would come to the ring with Mr. Fuji and Jim Cornette. Uh, and he would take on Lex Luger. Um, this match wasn't bad. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, you know, this match could have been a lot better, but for like 10 minutes of the match, man, Luger's on the mat in a, uh, like a shoulder hold, and it's really boring. Uh, you know, Mr. Perfect is the special guest referee. Uh, Luger would pull in Jim Cornette and Mr. Fuji and beat them up. Uh, Mr. Perfect's trying to get them out of the ring. Uh, Luger at this time has a pin on Yokozuna for the 1 2 3, but Mr. Perfect doesn't see it. Uh, Luger then gets angry and pushes Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect uh, rings the bell, and Yokozuna wins by disqualification. I gave it three and a half stars out of five. Could have been a lot better. Um, Afterwards, these two guys, will, you know, Mr. Perfect would be in the back. The announcers were asking him why he did what he did. Uh, he's like, you don't put your hands on an, an official. This turning Mr. Perfect Hill once again. Um, and him and Luger would have a confrontation in the locker room. Uh, we would then see Harvey Whippleman and the Fink have an episode in the ring. Uh, Harvey Whippleman's making fun of the Fink's hair, he rips a pocket off the Fink's suit, uh, the Fink would then push him down, Adam Bomb would come out, uh, then we would have a match between Adam Bomb and Earthquake, I could not give this match a rating, um, it was only, it was less than a minute where Earthquake would just squash Adam Bomb, um, I don't know why, I guess they were running, the time was short, like we said before, they already cut out one match, but Earthquake would squash Adam Bomb. Uh, we have Ty Pettengill interviews Cornette, Yokozuna, and Mr. Fuji talking about Bret Hart, talking about you just seen what we did to Lex Luger, uh, etc. And then we would go to the match of the night. I see a title match, ladder match, Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon. Who would be the real Intercontinental Champion? Uh, Shawn Michaels was a diesel at the time. Uh, Razor Ramon would pick up the win, but this match was an epic one, dude. I mean, they were doing shit all over the place on the ladders, taking some hard bumps for back then that we had never seen before. 
for its time. It got five stars out of five stars, hands down. Uh, Razor Ramon would pick up the win and be in a uh, league intercontinental champion. Um, we would see Bret Hart highlight, talking about how Bret Hart, how great Bret Hart was. Uh, we would have Burt Reynolds come out and announce. Um, and Piper would be the special guest referee for the main event. Um, the main event. We would have WWF Champion Yokozuna versus Bret the Hitman Hart. Uh, this bat match wasn't bad at all. You know, both of these guys had had matches earlier in the night. Um, they would go back and forth in a good match. Uh, I gave it three and a half stars out of five. Um, the spot, you know, a year earlier these two were battling and Yokozuna won the belt and this year he was losing it to the hitman off a, uh, he was going to the top to do a bonsai drop and, uh, he had lost balance and fell and knocked on his dome, on his head and Bret Hart rolled him up for the one, two, three and Bret Hart is the WWF champion once again. This, uh, was was great to see all the faces in the WWF would come out and uh, you know give a shout out to Bret Hart. Um, I thought I think this event event's very underrated. The only matches that really weren't any good on here were the Bigelow and them, and I don't bomb earthquake because it was short. But uh, you know I was nice and I went ahead and gave this event ten stars. I uh, thought it was good. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, if you've never seen it, go check it out. Uh, this has just been a quick review on uh, WrestleMania 10. I hope you guys like these WrestleMania reviews. I'll be doing more next year. Um, here in a few days, I'll have my WrestleMania 31 predictions. Uh, be on the lookout for that. But until next time, guys, I'll see y'all around, man. Peace.